The midterms are coming up. <laughs> no, not those midterms that you haven't studied for. But the midterms that happen on November 6th. The deadline to register is this Friday, October 5th, for all eligible voters. There seems to be some misconceptions about the midterms, so let's break it down and debunk some of those. First, the notion that your vote doesn't matter is not true. According to Pew Research, during the 2016 election, only 46.1% of eligible voters ages 18 to 29 years old came out to vote, which when compared to other age brackets like those 65 years and older, whose turnout was 70.9%, it's reasonable to see why your vote didn't count. See, the, young, the thing is, if more young people came out to vote, there would be major legislative change in Washington on issues that many young people feel strongly about, like the imposed tariffs that Trump is enforcing, which are only going to increase to 25% by January 1st. So if you're planning on scoring some deals on Black Friday, my friend, winter is coming. Women's reproductive rights are also at stake, as women are getting more limits on what they can do to their own bodies. Immigration is also going to get more restrictive for anyone who wants to come to the land of opportunities, which includes students who are here on a student visa. This midterm is extremely important, mainly because every seat in the House of Representatives and a third of the seats of the Senate are available, which means that policies could be changed and it would be hard for one party to rule them all. Harvard, which regularly collects survey, says that for this upcoming elections, they predict 37% of eligible voters under 30 will actually come out to vote. Although they, they tend to be off by about 7%. So it's actually closer to 30% or one in seven voters. Policies can't be changed if the people don't do their part and vote. The other misconception that I hear is, even if I did vote, the Sanders will still choose who they want. Again, not true. In states like Indiana, there's a rule called majority takes all, which means that if, for example, during the primary elections, more of the popular vote went to Hillary Clinton, the Sanders would have to vote for her. This misconception, I think, comes from the fact that there are swing states, states like Florida, North Carolina, New Hampshire, who do not have to choose a particular candidate, even if they won the popular vote. Which means that even if Hillary Clinton had won the popular vote, the Electoral College can still decide to vote for Donald Trump. I know what you're thinking. Then why even vote? Because those swing state senators were elected by voters who went out and voted. They just happened to choose a president that didn't elect who you wanted. So if this is something that is important to you, go out and register. It does not take long. There's a link in the description on where to register. Then please, go out to vote on November 6th. Your vote does matter, and it is something that some nations don't even have the chance to do. Reporting for Access USI, I'm JJ Jackson.